sky and not a cloud in sight, with a hellish shriek and a gush of gleet, two slobbering bundles came tumbling out. Jesus, too, cried Pa, but one died soon. Inside the shack, two fruit crates lined with newspaper sat side by side on the table, two boxes, and in each a babe. Pa peered in. Neither made a sound, and both lay upon their uh, both lay quite still upon their backs, naked as the day and with eyes wide and wandering. Pa drew the nibbled stub of a pencil from his trouser pocket and squinting, leaned toward the little ones, writing on the foot end of the firstborn's crib, number one, then licking the tip, number two, upon the crib in which Euclid lay. Then he stood back and stared from one to the other and one and the other, one and the other reciprocated earnestly. Theirs were strange almond eyes with slightly swollen upper lids and next to no lashes, blue but so pale as to almost diverge on pink, intent, eager, never still, not for a moment. Rather, they seemed to hover, these weird chattering eyes, hover and tremble in their browless sockets. Little Euclid coughed, short and sharp, his tiny pink tongue lapping at his lower lip and then curling back inside. And as if waiting for a signal and recognizing it in Euclid's timid hack, the brave little firstborn closed his eyes and fell into a slumber from which he would never wake. Goodbye, brother, I said to myself as he slipped away. And for a full minute I thought that I too was going under, so fucking cold was his dying. Then sailing through the still night came the raucous fray of her bitch shit, my mother. Ma, screeching in hoarse malediction through the very anus of obscenity whilst banging on the side of the Chevy and going, Where's my bottle? Where's my bottle? Thanks.